Hi guys, this video is inspired by a lecture which I took for the class 12 and 13 students of Westminster School, Dubai. Uh, I'm very thankful for the opportunity, but what transpired was I made a mistake where I made my PowerPoint very heavy with images and I wasn't able to show the images which I had planned to show to the students and I had to just take the lecture. So I decided that since I have the images and since I have the content, I will make a video so that many students, many parents and many of my YouTube subscribers will also benefit from this information. So if you're new to my channel and this video has just popped up, I'm Dr. Santosh Jacob. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and a stem cell medicine specialist from Chennai, India. And this video is about immunity and you should know this. So I am going to define immunity. Again, this is my definition for you guys to understand what the term immunity should mean. So immunity is an individual human being's capacity to recognize, tolerate and if need be destroy any pathogen stop here what is a pathogen a pathogen is anything which disturbs normal body function of a living being so a pathogen could be a virus a bacteria a fungus a toxin it could be smoke it could be poison anything it can come from outside the body but it can also develop inside the body Infections are an example of something which comes from outside the body to affect us against which we need immunity and diseases like cancer is something which starts from inside our body which also can be identified immediately and destroyed if our inner immune system is good. We have cells called natural killer cells. I will be talking about it definitely which help in identifying cancer cells or precancerous conditions and destroying it. So it goes without saying that we should know how to boost our immune system. We should learn about each and every part, each and every cell and do things to keep it at its best, shouldn't we? And now that you know why you should learn about immunity, let's go and learn what it actually means. All right, so now before we get into the immune system, I need to differentiate one thing for all of you. We are talking about the immune system that is like a digestive system. So tell me, what are the parts of the digestive system? You know, the mouth, the stomach, the intestine. When I ask you, what are the parts of the respiratory system? Of course, doc, it's the lungs, the cardiac system, the heart. What are the parts or what are the organs of the immune system? Immunity, we want our body's self-defense to be strong. Immunity is actually a set of organs. Immune cells are produced by a set of organs in our body. Some of the organs definitely you would have heard about and some of the names will be new. So let's hear about them. The first organ which I want to talk about is your tonsils. Tonsils actually produce lymphocytes. Then there is another gland called the thymus gland. The thymus gland is just behind your rib cage. It is a small gland. Now something about the thymus gland. The thymus gland is big when you're small. So it's bigger in children and it becomes smaller as you grow big. So in adults, it is smaller. There is a tip here. Children are protected from certain infections because it is bigger when they are smaller. And as adults, we do not need that protection. So it becomes smaller. The spleen, the bone marrow, that is the stuff which is in between your long bones. Then the lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are a very important component of your immune system. We have lymph nodes everywhere. We have lymph nodes in the throat. We have lymph nodes in the behind our collarbone, under our armpits, inside our groin. So here you can see an image of a hundred year old drawing of how lymph nodes are distributed all over our body. Yes, these tiny, tiny spherical organs which are there everywhere in your body form a network which releases cells, immune cells, which play a very important role in your immunity. And then is your stomach. Your stomach has certain glands called Peyer's patches, which also play a very important role in immunity. They basically protect from a lot of gastrointestinal infections. So let me take a second and put into perspective what we have assimilated till now. So we've learned what immunity is. So immunity is our body's first line of defense and how we are protected against pathogens which come from outside to harm our body. 
we also learned that a good immune system doesn't mean a very strong immune system which destroys anything it finds which looks foreign but it is something which recognizes tolerates and destroys if necessary and in the next segment when i talk about the cells which are involved in this recognizing tolerating and destroying you will understand why we need to know this in detail and i'm also going to be telling a few names and let me explain why i'm going to be doing it how many times have you done a blood test for a general health checkup and you have seen the first page and you've seen neutrophils eosinophils basophils monocytes but you do not know what it means if you pay attention to the next part the next time you see it you will be able to say looking at your test reports how your immunity is faring now let us talk about the cells which are involved in our immunity now just for sake of simplicity i'm going to classify the cells of the immune system into innate immune system cells and adaptive immune system cells so let's remember one thing innate immune system inborn so these cells are with us from the time we are born second these cells are non specific as in these cells will go and engulf eat destroy anything these cells are not specific for the type of pathogen for example these cells will destroy the influenza the, the tuberculosis the polio in the same way they do not have a specific mechanism for a virus or a specific mechanism for this kind of bacteria the two mechanisms they have is one they go and swallow they keep swallowing as much as they can and once they reach their maximum they implode and they die so when they implode and they die they release a few toxins which are known as free radicals so just remember the word free radicals this is very important we will talk about it in another video and then there are these other cells known as the sentinel cells so sentinel is somebody who stands on a tower and watches so these cells are called mast cells or dendritic cells yes that is the name just remember it it's fun mast dendritic so these cells what they do they are produced in the first 48 hours along with the suicide cells so the suicide cells are known as neutrophils another name to remember neutrophils so the sentinel cells are produced along with the neutrophils but they have a life which is longer so the sentinel cells sit and they watch they recognize what is the pathogen and they go to the cells of the adaptive immune system and they communicate it now coming to the adaptive immune system what are the cells of the adaptive immune system just remember t and b lymphocytes that is enough for now t and b lymphocytes so when the sentinel cells take the information about what is attacking us to the cells of the adaptive immunity that is the b lymphocytes and the t lymphocytes the b lymphocytes produce immunoglobulins these immunoglobulins just remember them as sticky candy which the cells which swallow the organisms like so these immunoglobulins are like sticky candy which come and stick on the organisms and our macrophages and monocytes which are the swallowing organisms they come and swallow everything which is coated by these immunoglobulins so basically immunoglobulins or antibodies do not actually go and kill the virus they just go and coat the virus once they coat it again you need good cells of the adaptive immune system and some cells of the innate immune system to go and swallow the organisms which is coated by the antibodies so before i summarize just remember this term barrier immunity now we spoke about the innate immune system and the cells of the innate immune system we spoke about the neutrophils the mast cells and the dendritic cells we spoke that the neutrophils are the ones which go and kill the suicide cells so supporting those cells is another immunity another part of innate immunity we are born with our skin the acidity in our saliva the acidity in our stomachs the organisms in our intestines the acidity in our tears goblet cells in our lungs cilia in our lungs which move upward and block toxins and organisms from entering inside all these are barrier immunity which is also a supportive part of the innate immune system cells so for an organism to infect us this is what we have learned now an organism comes so when a load of the organism comes many organisms come first if your barrier immunity is good so a part of the organism load is deleted here 
then the cells of your innate immunity the immediate immunity come your neutrophils come and they come and eat these cells and they destroy them at the same time your sentinel cells the mast cells and the dendritic cells take the information back to your adaptive immune system cells which are the b lymphocytes and the t lymphocytes so the b lymphocytes produce the sticky antibodies immunoglobulins which go and coat the organism and once an organism is coated it becomes easy meat for the swallowing cells which are there which are the macrophages the monocytes and the t lymphocytes and once this is done our body is relieved of the infection which tried to attack us wow that was a loaded session i hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something and when i get time i will definitely make a video about the next part of my lecture with the westminster school dubai 2 Thank you guys for this opportunity and thank you for staying through this video. I really hope you guys took something out of it. Bye bye.